Okay, now uh, let's start to the first session for Dr. Mortuza. Dr. Mortuza, uh, can you hear? Can you hear me? And are yes. you ready? <coughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, before we proceed, I'd like to read the resume of uh, Dr. Firos. Okay. Uh, please, the Mr. Rifki. Okay, uh, this is the resume of uh, Dr. Virus Mortusa. Now he work in uh, Gamma Source Division, Institute of Food and Radiation Biology, Atomic Energy Research Establishment in Bangladesh. Uh, this is the educational qualification. He achieved his doctoral Doctor of Philosophy uh, last year in. 2020 in Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology. He got the master degree in biochemistry and molecular biology in uh, 2008 in University of Dhaka and get the bachelor degree also in the same uh, field in biochemistry and molecular biology in 2008. Seven, from the same university, University of uh, Dhaka, Bangladesh, and also next. Uh, Rifki. Yeah, he got uh, an award. The last award is uh, sorry, the first, the, the previous slide. He got award of the Nuclear Researcher Exchange Program at 2011, fellowship by the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sport, Science, and Technology, Japan. And he worked as a scientific officer in Gamma Source Division, IFRB, AERE, Bangladesh Atomic Energy Commission from 2009 to 2014 and uh, the position of senior scientific officer at the same organization from 2014 to 2020. And then uh, currently he is a principal uh, scientific officer from the same organization, uh, Gamma Source Division, IFRB, AERE, Bangladesh Atomic Energy Commission from 2020 until now. And he has uh, some skills like uh, molecular biology, microbiology, and others, especially uh, nuclear safety and radiation uh, biology. Okay, uh, next is, of course, there are uh, a lot of publication that has been published by uh, Dr. Firos. Maybe I can, uh, I cannot, uh, read one by one because we have a limited time here and maybe that's that's all the uh, the resume of uh, dr virus mortuza okay uh dr mortuza or uh, dr virus it's time for you to deliver your lecture it's about uh, 40 minutes so uh, the time is yours <laughs> Assalamualaikum. <clears throat> so, can you hear me? Yes, yes, clearly. Hi. Right. Uh, good. Good morning. Welcome to my presentation. Uh, my presentation title is a biological effect of radiation and application of cobalt sixty gamma irradiator. Uh, I am Dr. M. D. Firuz Mortiga, working as a principal scientific officer at Gamma Source Division Institute of Food and Radiation Biology, Bangladesh Atomic Energy Commission. <laughs> The contents of my presentation, uh, first of all, I will talk about objectives, then basic information of radiation and mode of action of radiation and biological effects. 
<coughs> then application of gamma irradiator and activities of gamma source division in the division which uh, I work. Objectives. First of all, uh, I would uh, like to talk about uh, uh, information about radiation and then uh, to improve understanding of radiation, what it is and how it interacts. The objective is to share and discuss about effects of ionizing radiation, especially gamma radiation, and to inform about the applications of cobalt 60 gamma irradiator uh, in uh, IFRB. Now, first basic information of radiation. So as we all know, radiation is a form of energy and there are different types of radiation. Radiation is two types based on the ability to cause ionization. One is ionizing and another is non-ionizing. Uh, so suppose uh, uh, ultraviolet, uh, visible infrared microwaves, these are non-ionizing radiation. And, <clears throat> and ionizing radiation is X-ray and gamma rays. Uh, radiation can also be categorized uh, as particle type and wave type. Particle uh, types are alpha particle, beta particle, neutron beams, and proton beams. And uh, electromagnetic wave type uh, is X-ray and gamma ray. And gamma ray is emitted from the nucleus, whereas X-ray is generated outside the nucleus from the electron shell. Both of them are photons and work similarly. Now, some properties of uh, different ionizing radiation. Uh, so uh, here alpha radiation, it has charge plus two and a range in the air is five to seven centimeter. And it's health uh, risk is ingestion and inhalation uh, because it has high charge, um, uh, positive charge. Uh, it cannot travel uh, much, but uh, uh, it, it creates a very high uh, activity or uh, action in in, look, in its a small area. Then beta beta radiation, uh, it has a charge of minus one and it can travel about four meter uh, per MeV. And health risk is superficial skin injury. Uh, gamma ray it doesn't have any charge and it can travel up to 500 meters. And the problem uh, is uh, occurs when whole body injury at high radiation. High dose. And high dose is uh, I characterized as dose more than 100 millisievert. I'll talk about this uh, later. Now, as I said, that alpha particle, uh, if we consider our body, uh, so uh, it, will, uh, it will interact in the skin and it will not uh, pass on the skin. But beta ray, it will, uh, it will uh, cross the skin and uh, go a little bit inside and uh, it will interact here. And gamma ray can pass the skin tissue, bone and organs and can interact uh, inside the organs. So uh, to avoid <coughs> this uh, radiation, um, uh, so uh, there are many kinds of shielding uh, material that we can use, suppose for alpha ray, uh, paper can stop alpha rays, so it, it's no big deal. Uh, but uh, as I said, that uh, it, it is a high linear energy transferring uh, radiation. So in a very small area, it will produce lots of ionization before it uh, neutralizes. Then a beta ray can be stopped by thin aluminum um, sheet, and gamma ray and X-ray can be stopped by thick lead shield neutrons by water or con concrete. Now, units of radiation measurement. A physical units, uh, radioactivity uh, is measured in becquerel in SI unit. One becquerel is one disintegration per second. So if, if one atom breaks down um, or decays, then it, uh, in, in one second, then we call one becquerel. And uh, from the radioactivity, uh, we get absorbed dose. Uh, absorbed dose is uh, uh, measured in gray. One gray is one joule per kg. Uh, this, uh, this is a very important unit. We should uh, remember one gray equals one joule per kg. 
and equivalent dose uh, is measured in sievert and effective dose is also measured in sievert. Now, uh, if we uh, think about uh, uh, source of radiation and the person is getting a uh, dose from there, so absorbed dose is the amount of uh, energy absorbed by a substance unit, a mass that received radiation. Uh, it is uh, designated in gray. So absorbed energy uh, uh, divided by mass of part of receiving radiation. Now uh, we can measure this uh, by a different type of dosimeter system. Uh, uh, there are many different dosimeter system by which we can uh, determine the amount of uh, dose received. So uh, from gray, then uh, we uh, we can go to equivalent dose. Uh, equivalent dose. Uh, is, is, uh, is the expression for radiation dose in terms of uh, which depends on types of radiation. And afterwards, uh, because there are sensitivity, uh, different in sensitivity among organs, so uh, we need effective dose. Effective dose is unit for expressing radiation doses in terms of effect on the human body. As I said, equivalent dose, equivalent dose, it, dip, uh, it differs. Uh, 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 in different radiation sources. So suppose if uh, alpha, uh, if uh, gamma ray, X-ray and beta particles, the uh, radiation weighing factor is one. So, uh, for proton beams, it's two. For alpha particle, it's 20. So suppose if one person uh, got uh, absorbed dose of one gray, but uh, if, he, uh, if the uh, radioactive source is alpha particle, then uh, the equivalent dose will be 20 sievert. But if it is gamma ray, uh, then the equivalent dose will be one. And similarly, because different tissues uh, have uh, different sensitivity, uh, so uh, there is tissue weighing factor and uh, red bone marrow, colon, lungs, stomach, breast, these, these are uh, highly sensitive, uh, highly sensitive. Uh, so the tissue, tissue weighing factor is 0 0.12, highest for this. Uh, these organs. Uh, yes. uh, so uh, if we multiply, if we multiply the tissue and factor with the equivalent dose, then we will get the effective dose. And uh, by the summation of all organ uh, effective dose, we can get the effective dose of the whole body. Now, uh, why this radiation? It is not that radiation is only in the nuclear facilities like this. Radiation is inside a human body. The most important natural radionuclides that are found in human body are uranium, thorium, polonium, lead, potassium, carbon, beryllium, etc. So we have uh, these radionuclides inside our body. Now, if we only consider potassium, a, a normal uh, person, uh, contains about 140 gram of potassium, potassium among which uh, uh, the pot radioactive potassium uh, the abundance is 1.2 into 10 to the power minus four. So if we calculate, then uh, we can get 4,375 4, uh, becquerel uh, from only potassium, radioactive potassium. So, so radiation dose per year from potassium, a uh, one person, uh, normal person, he will uh, with a body weight of 70 kg, uh, will get uh, a 1.3 into 10 to the power minus four gray uh, radiation from potassium only. And uh, other uh, radionuclides are also there. Now, <clears throat> Uh, inside, as I said, that there is radiation inside uh, our body in the environment. We are getting radiation from many sources. Uh, suppose cosmogenic radionuclides, we get 0 0.1 um, millisievert dose from there. And uh, from our body also, we get uh, about 0 0.26 or 4 millisievert. <laughs> and uh, from the terrestrial radiation, like thorium from uranium and other sources, we get about uh, three, 0 0.3 millisievert. And we inhale radon. Radon comes from uh, uranium and other sources. So uh, we get uh, radiation of one millisievert from uh, radon per year. 
and cosmic radiation is about 0 0.28 millisievert. So uh, in the environment, there are many sources of radiation and that we are exposed to. A human being absorbs about three millisievert dose per year from nature. Now, how uh, does it act? The mode of action of radiation and biological effect. Now, uh, I will uh, talk about on the uh, gamma ray and X-rays. X-ray and gamma ray, uh, first of all, they are high energy photons, so uh, they will uh, they, they will uh, dislodge electron from atom and make it ionize. And the, this is the direct effect. And afterwards, the electron uh, with uh, the energy of the photon, it will uh, create ionization uh, uh, reacting with other molecules, especially water, because in the cell, uh, about 70% is water. So uh, it will mainly uh, react with water and it will produce different type of um, uh, free radicals and ions like hyd uh, hydroxyl ion, hydrogen ion, and um, hydrogen free radical, hydroxyl free radical. So these uh, free radicals and ions, it will uh, interact, oh, it will interact uh, with the biomolecules, other biomolecules. Now, <clears throat> why? Uh, because short life uh, of these free radicals and high uh, activity uh, of these free radicals, and they uh, only those formed in water column of two to three nanometer around DNA are able to participate in indirect effect. Now, uh, uh, because they are, as I said, that uh, they are very uh, reactive and they have short life. So, uh, in in three nanometer proximity, if the DNA uh, is close uh, to the uh, to the ion that are formed, free radical that are formed, then uh, it will cause uh, it will cause uh, or it will react with the DNA. Uh, one thing is that why we are uh, concerned uh, only about uh, concerned about DNA mainly. The reason is uh, DNA uh, is uh, uh, is the uh, most important biomolecule of our cell. Suppose uh, if proteins or carbohydrates or lipids are uh, damaged, then uh, from uh, from DNA and other sources uh, they can be. Um, uh, reproduce, but if DNA is damaged, uh, and then uh, there is only thing, one copy, so so it cannot be um, uh, reproduced. So we are mainly concerned about uh, DNA. But uh, but the free radical or hydroxyl ion that are formed, it will uh, it will affect other biomolecules as well. It it will affect not only in DNA, it will affect uh, with uh, protein and carbohydrate and lipids and others uh, also. Now, types of DNA lesion that are formed. Uh, there are different types of DNA breakdown or damage that occurs, uh, um, but most uh, lethal is the double standard DNA break, uh, where two strands are broken, and single strand DNA breaks are also uh, dangerous. Now, suppose a, a person, uh, if uh, a cell or a person is uh, uh, is got a one gray dose of gamma radiation. Then uh, how much uh, damage it will cause? Now one gray of dose will uh, cause base damage of one thousand to two thousand, and uh, deoxyribose <coughs> damage about twelve hundred, and single standard breaks will be there about one thousand. Double standard break, which is most important and most um, uh, critical, uh, it, it will produce uh, 20 to 40 actually double stand breaks in the DNA if uh, if someone is exposed to one gray of radiation. But this one gray radiation is very high actually. There is a, a no possibility of getting that much radiation except uh, at a nuclear accident. Now, what happened in the cell? A cell has complex signal transduction and cell cycle checkpoints and repair pathways to respond to DNA damage. So when there is damage, then uh, our cell has the uh, DNA repair mechanism. So they, uh, it will, it will re repair the DNA. And uh, if, uh, if it is incomplete repair, then mutation occurs. And then possibility of causing cancer and hereditary effect 
And if repair fails, if there is lots of uh, breakdown and uh, and uh, a repair enzyme cannot repair the uh, DNA, then cell death occurs, and uh, which uh, can lead to possibility of causing acute defect and fatal effect. And if repair succeed, then there is no hazard. In human body, there is an uh, antioxidant uh, process uh, to neutralize free radical. Uh, the free radical that is pro produced by radiation and other sources. So we have an antioxidant uh, process which neutralizes them. And also there is very efficient DNA repair system to repair DNA damage. Now this uh, work was done by uh, some researcher uh, uh, and uh, it is a very, you know, very good article. So uh, the researcher showed that uh, suppose these are uh, these are human um, human cancerous cell line. So <clears throat> these are pre uh, irradiation cells before irradiation. These are the picture of before irradiation, and these are the dose hundred milligram, five hundred milligram, and one thousand milligram. These are suppose marker uh, uh, which binds. Uh, to those positions where there is double stranded break, BSB. And uh, like um, here, yellow fluorescent protein is stacked with uh, tumor suppressor um, protein, PP3B, P1. So these, uh, these uh, proteins bind uh, uh, to the double strand break. So uh, by this uh, way, these are called foci. foci. So uh, by the number of foci, you can understand how many double strand breaks are there. Uh, to put uh, to say it in simply that by the number of foci we can say how many double stand breaks are there. So as you can see that uh, suppose if uh, there is 100 milligram dose then and there are about two uh, to uh, double stand breaks and it increases with increasing uh, uh, dose. So in 1000 milligram or one gray, 1000 milligram means one gray. Uh, there will be about 20 to uh, more than 20 double standard breaks. So, however, uh, the researcher showed that, um, uh, as you can see in this uh, picture, that um, these are the doses, and over time, over time, suppose at four hours, as you can see that the repair me mechanism, uh, it repaired uh, many. Suppose there was two uh, double stand break and repair. There were many double stand break breaks here, but it repaired uh, some of them. And by this way, by this way, by the graph, you can see that uh, with time, with time the number of double stand breaks uh, is um, repaired. And the researcher showed that uh, suppose 24 hours or after 48 hours. Uh, the cell recovers uh, and repairs all the double standard breaks. Now we have things to compare that what causes cancer. We have some understanding that <clears throat> radiation uh, causes mutation and it causes cancer. Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, uh, it's true to some extent, and uh, about uh, it is dependent on the uh, amount of radiation, but there are also other things that we should know that, as I said, uh, as I showed in previous uh, previous slides, that one gray of radiation, it produces um, is damage of 1,000 to 2,000, and single standard breaks about 1,000 and double standard breaks 20 to 40, which is very little. Now, in, in our body, uh, there is cellular metabolism. And uh, uh, to produce energy and to do other uh, things, cell uh, cell do metabolism. So uh, during this normal phenomena of cellular metabolism, every day uh, in each cell there is about more than twelve thousand uh, base damage occurs, and more than fifty five thousand uh, single standard breaks occurs, and more than about twenty five double standard breaks occur every day per cell per day. Uh, and this, uh, this was uh, mentioned in the uh, article in Cell, published in Cell. So, uh, 
So two to three percent of all metabolized oxygen is converted to free radical during cellular metabolism. And about 70,000 lesions is produced per cell per day due to cellular metabolism. This results in an average of about one mutation per cell per day. Whereas background radiation of one millisievert per year produces uh, about 10 to the power minus seven mutation per cell per day. So uh, DNA damage, DNA breakdown, mutation, these things are all natural uh, and it occurs inside our body. Now, uh, I will talk about application of gamma irradiator. Now, gamma irradiator are equipped with high activity radioactive sources, mainly cobalt 60 and cesium 137, which are used for different purposes, such as sterilization or decontamination, et cetera. Now, there are many applications of gamma irradiator. Uh, uh, it can be used for the sterilization of medical product, pharmaceutical product, and tissue-based biological product, and radio also in radiotherapy and cosmetics and toiletries. Uh, it, uh, it is used in research and development, and also mainly uh, also in food irradiation. Now I will fo focus on food irradiation here a little bit. Food irradiation is a technology which applies ionizing radiation. Uh, which applies ionizing radiation to food for improving the safety and, of food and extending the shelf life of food by reducing uh, or eliminating microorganisms and insects. Now, food irradiation is a very safe process. Uh, there are also many other processes for uh, decontamination um, like uh, heat or chemical, but uh, research are found uh, and, uh, and the policy making bodies, they found that food irradiation is very safe. And it is permitted in over 60 countries and about uh, 500,000 metric tons of food are processed annually worldwide. As I said, a very safe process. Uh, I said it because uh, to, because by food ir irradiation, when we irradiate a food, uh, it, it makes some uh, chemical changes or like this, but it does not make the food radioactive. It doesn't make the food radioactive. This is one important thing. Uh, it is like uh, that when we irradiate something, it's like uh, we, uh, we switch on the light so uh, we can see everything. Uh, but uh, when we switch off, there is no light uh, comes from uh, the things that we could see. Uh, so uh, uh, what I'm trying to say that by irradiation, uh, the food or anything, it will not become radioactive. And from there, there will be no radiation. Uh, there uh, will be no radiation. So uh, it is very safe. Now, uh, in the world, uh, there are many sources that are used in food irradiation. Uh, gamma rays are used, X-ray and electron beams are used also um, for food irradiation. Now, irradiation can serve for many purposes. In case of food, now prevention of foodborne illness. Uh, to e effectively eliminate organisms that cause foodborne illness, uh, we can use food irradiation. Uh, we can use it for preservation also uh, to destroy our inactivated organism that cause a spoilage and decomposition and extend the shelf life of food. Uh, it can also use for control of insect to destroy insect. And uh, it can also be used for delay of sprouting and ripening to inhib inhibit sprouting in potatoes and uh, delay ripening of fruit to increase longevity. And uh, it can also be used for sterilization of food uh, for uh, the use of uh, patient, uh, like AIDS patient, uh, and also the NASA use uh, this kind of food. Based on now, same thing, almost same thing here. Uh, the, the dose uh, is mentioned. Now, uh, for low dose uh, irradiation up to one kilogram, it is called radicide section. And the purpose of this is to inhibit sprouting, delay in ripening, prevent insect infestation, 
and parasite control and inactivation. So they use different doses. All of them are uh, below or equal to one kilogram. And uh, there is medium dose, one to 10 kilogram. Uh, and this process is called radiolization. And purpose is extend shelf life of raw uh, and fresh fish, like etc. Extend shelf life of refrigerated and uh, frozen meat products and reduce risk of pathogenic and spoilage microbes in meat, seafood, spices, and poultry, etc. And increase juice yield and re re reduction in cooking time of dried vegetables, etc. So for this purpose, uh, radiation use of dose from 1 to 10. And for high dose above 10 kilograms, it is called rap apartization, rap apartization. And mainly it is used for sterilization of spices, dry vegetable seasoning, sterilization of packaging material, sterilization of food uh, uh, who are immunosuppressant uh, patient. So for those people, uh, food are irradiated and sterilized and, and then uh, given to them. So for this purpose, a high uh, dose is needed. Uh, so the dose is uh, above 10 kilograms. Now I will talk about uh, my organization, my institute. Um, so I work in Gamma Source Division and Institute of Food and Radiation Biology. We have a uh, cobalt-60 gamma irradiator. Cobalt-60 uh, is produced from cobalt-59 uh, by hitting cobalt-59 with a neutron. It produces cobalt-60. Uh, so this cobalt-60 decays to nickel. And in this decay process, it releases uh, one beta uh, of 0 0.31 mega electron volt and two gamma electrons, uh, two gamma uh, rays with high um, energy, 1.17 mega electron volt and 1.33 mega electron volt. These energies uh, of gamma is used for different purposes like sterilization and decontamination in our division. Now, initially, a cobalt 60 gamma source was brought from Canada in 1980. Um, and the extent of the source was 50 kCi, and that is 1850 terabecquerel uh, during commencement. Uh, afterwards, it was successfully disposed to the health physics and waste management unit uh, at our organization. This, this is the uh, first uh, irradiator, and now uh, it is decomposed. Uh, in, in our health physics and waste management unit. Later in uh, year 2000, a uh, 50 kCi cobalt 60 batch type gamma irradiator was installed by Rich India. This is the uh, irradiator. Actually, this irradiator uh, is mainly research oriented uh, and uh, we give semi commercial service also. So it is uh, not very high, uh, the activity is not very high. Uh, on the 50 KCI or at in the year of 2000. Afterwards, uh, in 2014, the activity was increased to 90 KCI, and uh, that is at 3,330 terabecquerel uh, in cooperation with Rich India. At present, the source activity is 35.4 KCI. Now, we uh, put our, our uh, products uh, like this and we irradiate it, irradiate it uh, for a certain time. And afterwards, we do dosimetry. How much, how much radiation uh, uh, it got. So for dose measurement system, there are uh, four dose measurement system that we use uh, in our division. A FRIKE dosimeter, uh, it, uh, it is for the low dose dosimetry, 5 to 400 gray. It is in gray level. It determines uh, those of gray level. Others like amber perspex, red perspex, ceric ceres dosimeter, these dosimeters are used for a high dose radiation, like above as the, uh, the 1 to 30 or 50 kilogray dose. Determine how much dose the product received we use this kind of radiation uh, dosimetry system. These are uh, some of the picture of dosimetry. So the, uh, now the irradiation uh, services of GST, activities of gamma source division, uh, we 
uh, we give a gamma irradiation service uh, basically for in two sectors in research and development purpose free of cost and uh, for commercial purpose and to earn revenue and uh, the research and uh, the stakeholders for research and development are institute of bac bangladesh atomic energy commission where i work and other research organization all over the country uh, comes to our division for a research uh, irradiation purpose and we, as I said, that we also use this source for semi-commercial purpose. And many food industry and medical and pharmaceutical companies uh, come to our facility to take irradiation service. R&D services, Gamma Source Division provide uh, irradiation service to for research to different private and government organization, including Institute of BAC for free of cost. Uh, list of irradiated research sample of different institute of BSc. These are uh, inst different institute and divisions of uh, Bangladesh Atomic Energy Commission. <coughs> they uh, they uh, uh, use different uh, samples uh, for R&D purposes like fruit fly, PUP, uh, cucumber, steel form eggs, microbial solution, amyl banana bud, and uh, PUP and blue fly PUP. <coughs> dried fish, uh, fish fish, bitter gourd, pineapple. Uh, this is uh, my food technology division. And, uh, and the tissue banking and biomaterial research, the uh, irradiate amnion graph, bone graph, bacterial suspension, tissue graph, etc. Other uh, institutes also use their um, samples of irradiation. And there are uh, different doses uh, for this uh, research. And these are the list of irradiated uh, research sample of different organizations of Bangladesh. Uh, these are uh, apart from BAC, other uh, organizations like Bangladesh Forest Research Institute, uh, many universities, Bangladesh Sugar Can Research Institute, uh, Bangladesh Institute of Nuclear um, Agriculture, Amishing, and uh, many other uh, institutes send their product to our uh, division and we uh, irradiate it according to their demand. And as you see, there are different types of products, wood block, fish, sugar cane seed, rice seed, peanut, etc. that we uh, irradiate. Uh, commercial service, uh, we uh, give uh, commercial services to different uh, companies. They, uh, they send their spices, raw materials, surgical uh, materials, and injection and syringe and different types of uh, pharmaceutical products and also there are many uh, different types of food products like uh, spirulina, turmeric, mushroom and uh, bully sticks for pet food and goat ear for pet food uh, this kind of uh, products they send for uh, irradiation. So uh, Gamma Source Division provide irradiation service to commercial products of different medical and pharmaceutical companies and food processing and manufacturing companies of Bangladesh and earns revenue from, uh, for Bangladesh. In last five years, uh, Gamma Source Division earned about 20 million taka from this. And these actually, uh, the main purpose is to provide service uh, to the companies. So, there are many pharmaceutical and uh, food processing company that uh, send their uh, different types of uh, material uh, in our division uh, for different purposes. Uh, and these are some of the list of uh, the companies and their products. And this is also uh, other companies, more than actually uh, more than 50 uh, pharmaceutical and food processing company, they come uh, to our division for uh, radiation purpose. Summary, uh, Gamma Source Division is providing radiation service to RNG samples at free of cost and JGR revenue from the country by rendering irradiation service uh, to commercial product. And the demand and scope are increasing significantly day by day. Uh, and so the number of irradiators and necessary facilities are going to be increased in near future in Bangladesh. Now, 
uh, as I discussed earlier about radiation. Uh, so, so there are uh, three basic rules uh, when and uh, when there is any radioactive source on or when we hear about radiation, we should follow try to follow this rule. This is uh, time, distance, and shielding. Uh, we should uh, spend very less time, uh, as less as possible. Um, and we should uh, try to maintain distance uh, from the source, and uh, we should try to use proper shielding uh, for uh, to protect us from radiation. <laughs> now, uh, the, the issue of radiation exposure is not only a matter of safety; it is also a matter of benefit compared with risk. Because uh, yes, there is little bit risk, obviously, uh, but. We should also think uh, the, about the benefits of uh, radiation. Uh, uh, but, uh, and we need to be cautious and careful about radiation, but we should not be frightened unnecessarily. This is one important thing that uh, we should remember. That we have to be very careful and cautious, uh, but we should not be frightened unnecessarily. Now, for the students, uh, uh, I would like to uh, have some questions like this. Uh, I hope that they will uh, be able to answer this question. Now, uh, which organ is most sensitive to radiation? And uh, what is the main source of mutation or cancer? Radiation or cellular metabolism? And does food become radioactive after gamma irradiation? And is it safe to eat gamma irradiated food? Uh, these are very simple questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in Bangla, we say, Apne and in, in Indonesia, maybe it's Terima Kasi Baniyat. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Firos. It's very interesting uh, presentation and uh, we got a lot of uh, new information especially about the irradiation process how we calculate and we know that uh, from from your uh, lecture we know that the gamma ray has more penetration than the alpha and uh, beta ray and also uh, radiation is everywhere right uh, even in the uh, human body and it is uh, radiation process is natural occur in uh, human body and for the food uh, radiation to food doesn't make the food become uh, radioactive that's a uh, i think uh, important uh, statement so we don't have to uh, scare to <laughs> consume the uh, radiated uh, food okay uh, now i uh, i will open the discussion session so if you have any question, you can uh, raise your hand or write uh, your question in the uh, chat box. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Firuz, I want to talk some question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Dr. Firuz Murtaza, for your nice presentation. Uh, can you please show me the uh, slide uh, double stand break, single stand break, base damage? You give the um, uh, you give the rate uh, money. Yeah. This one or hmm? this one? This one, yes, 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 this one. So uh, here. Please show the please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, can you see? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, here you showed that uh, base damage, the single stand break, double stand break. Uh, this slide is for yeah natural radiation or money radiation from external source. Yeah, of course it is from uh, external source because. Uh, 
it is not possible to get one gray radiation from uh, nature of soil. Nature. Uh, yeah. If if someone is uh, exposed to that much radiation, suppose if a uh, uh, nuclear disaster occurs, uh, okay, uh, or if uh, for experiment uh, uh, research related uh, experiment, to, if we expose a cell uh, of a human cell uh, to one gray of radiation, then uh, this type of uh, DNA damage occurs. Acha, this radiation, if some somebody somebody is exposed one grade radiation uh, at uh, instantly, may you mean that? Uh, yes. We know that uh, one cancer patient every day he is exposed uh, on an average two gray. Yes. So so if anybody exposed more than one grade that is two gray uh, possibility of uh, possibility of occurring uh, single stand double stand or waste damage is, is more than this okay of course. Of course. oh okay uh, okay so, uh, base damage what does it mean i, I as yes, i have... uh, uh, there are uh, four bases uh, of dna uh, like adenine guanine cytosine and thymine uh, hmm. so uh, uh, it, it will, and there are four nucle, uh, nuclei, uh, nucleotides, and, uh, and there are purine and pyrimidine bases. So uh, it will damage those bases. Uh, like uh, it is, it is the uh, double strand. Yeah. Now, now uh, here these are the bases. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fakharuddin. And thank you for the answer uh, from Dr. Piros. Okay, anyone has uh, other question? You can raise your hand and I will select. I want to ask. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so, high energy camera vision produces electron disruption. I'm sorry, can, please, uh, can you introduce yourself first and then oh. the question? Okay, um, I apologize. My name is Adila Debra Vamsna. I'm from um, the IP. Um, I'm from New. Um, university student okay please continue your uh, question okay so uh like uh sir said uh high energy camera rotation produces electron disruption that can cause this disruption result in damage to the dna and other cellular uh structures so on can it degrade such products like food with a uh, high fat content and um can it um uh, I think that's my question. Can you can you please repeat again and a little bit slowly, please and clearly? Okay. Can can you repeat uh, maybe slowly because the uh, maybe I can. Uh, okay. Uh, it, so the high, high high gamma high energy gamma radiation produces electron disruption on or ionization. Yes. That causes uh, this disruption result in damage to DNA, right? Yes. And and, and other uh, cellular structure. So uh, can it degrade such product like uh, food with the high fat content? Actually, uh, the. Uh, the purpose of uh, food irradiation, suppose decontamination, or uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, as I said, that uh, sprout inhibition or like this, uh, the amount of uh, gamma radiation that we use, uh, it it will not change the uh, change the nutritional value uh, uh, very much uh, because uh, very very little amount of a protein or carbohydrate uh, or lipids and this thing uh, will be changed due to uh, due to uh, this this much radiation. But 
uh, microorganisms like uh, suppose uh, bacteria uh, will be killed because uh, if we if we uh, can compare the size uh, of uh, a protein uh, and a carbohydrate in comparison with the size of uh, bacteria, uh, so uh, so uh, the bacteria is, is huge. Uh, so the uh, gamma radiation, uh, the amount of gamma radiation that will kill the uh, bacteria, but that much gamma radiation will uh, cause a very little amount of proteins or carbohydrates or lipids or, uh, to, uh, to uh, modify or change. Uh, there will be change, obviously. Uh, there will be damage, but the amount is very, very little. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, food radiation is uh, safe in, in a certain dose, right? So of it, course, because because whatever we do, uh, suppose uh, we will not eat something raw. Um, uh, so we 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 cook. Uh, we use uh, many things to uh, avoid uh, contamination. Uh, so 